According to the 2021 Accenture report, the global gaming sector is a multi-billion dollar industry, racking up an estimated value of 300 billion U.S. dollars. Here to talk to us about what that means, particularly for us here in Jamaica, founder of Sprite Ranch Studios, Glenn Henry. Good morning to you, Glenn. Welcome to Smile. Hi, morning, morning. Glad good to, to be here. Good to have you. That is a bag of money, sir. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's and actually how, more, how, more how, how active are, are Jamaican players within that framework? Um, we're pretty active. I mean, our tastes more or less mimic what's happening in the States. Um, we play the same games, the same multiplayer games, the same big blockbuster games like uh, Assassin's Creed, Apex Legends, those type of things. So we're pretty plugged in. So, so what we're es essentially saying, right, is mm -hmm. that Jamaicans who have the talent and the ability to create games, apps, mm -hmm. I don't know what other kind of products um, can make this a lucrative career. Yes, the opportunity is there. So how, how does one do that? Well, as it is right now, we're still, the industry in a true sense is still new, we're still nascent. There is a gap in terms of formal education. So a lot of the people who are interested in this space um, are self-taught. So what we need to do collectively is kind of come together to form a block to kind of advocate for our own needs. Um, example would be um, just attending trade shows. Mm -hmm. uh, travel costs are really, really high. Um, a number of people have been able to attend via scholarship programs being put on by uh, organizations such as the IGDA or the Global Game Jam. And that's kind of how we have to start, you know, making a name for ourselves. Um, what I've been doing through uh, a group that I am the loudest member of, um, the Jamaica Game Developer Society, uh, is kind of trying to put together presentations and um, yeah, presentation sessions with other prominent uh, mm. developers and practitioners within the industry to kind of showcase the different skills and the different ways in which Jamaicans can contribute and build out a career for themselves. How big is that organization, the Jamaica Gaming Development Society? Well, we are on Discord primarily, and I believe the last count was over 200 members. Really? Yeah. That's very good. Men and women? Yes. Very nice. So well, tell me what Sprite Wrench does. Well, Sprite Wrench is really the vehicle for me to make just my creative um, projects. So I primarily focus on PC and mobile games. Um, I release on Steam and the Google Play Store. Uh, I'm branching off into the App Store now. Yeah. And tell me how one earns from that. Because, I mean, there may be people watching who have, without telling me all your secrets, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but there, there are a lot of young people who may have the talent, but they don't know how to monetize it. Okay. So for monetizing, uh, on the mobile space, it's pretty much uh, ad-driven. That's free, free to play freemium um, content. Uh, so they normally work with other ad agencies to integrate these pop-up ads for rewards or, uh, or for a uh, punishment kind of mechanic where, where you lose and an ad will pop up. Um, that's for the mobile space. For PC and console, it's normally direct sales. So you pay uh, anywhere between 10 to, to about $60 for a game and you own that game and the players can play it. So that's the general model right okay now. okay mm -hmm. and and is there any or are there any prominent jamaicans or the individuals entities groups that are really killing it in the gaming industry right now well i would like to highlight my good friend um graham reed graham of legend on twitter he is working on a title called super space club and he was recently um part of the the Electronic Expo E3, uh, his game was showcased Black Voices in Gaming, their segment, um, earlier this year. So he's making some big moves and I'm very proud of him. 
Excellent. That's got to be game changing, right? For him and for, for all the others who are aspiring to get to that level. And of course, I mean, Jamaicans have our hand in everything. And I know we have some really talented um, young people whose minds now are set on different ways of earning, who are getting into this industry because they realize it can be lucrative. I mean, I'm reading here about um, Jan Rieke, is that his name? Jan Rieke is a Jamaican gaming content maker, creator, yeah. who has over 1 million subscribers. Mm -hmm. Something can really go so far, Chuchu? True. That's amazing. That's amazing. What about eSports? They say that's the avenue for, for, for a lot of folks as well to, to create and to earn. All right, so eSports is really just another avenue um, to earn within the industry itself. Um, the Jamaica eSports, um, the JEI, um, they have been kind of pushing for making tournaments and giving people the tools and the context to kind of compete in that space. I believe that there was a talk about the Olympics for them to, to participate in, for the Dr. Bird's team to participate there. Uh, so yeah, it is, it is an avenue. It takes a lot of time, a lot of dedication, and the primary monetization is sponsorships in that way, because you mm -hmm. become an athlete. Mm -hmm. So how do you see this, this industry building out in Jamaica? Um, my dream is that more independent developers will come up, make their own content, create their own IP, and build a brand around that and collectively we can start making what we can call Caribbean games and right. build up publishers that cater specifically to our needs, our audience, and showcase what we have to the wider world. Yeah, and is it an expensive venture to start up if, you, if it's something you want to get into? No, not really. You, know, you can start as a hobbyist, you can participate in game jams, which are just small hackathons, you can make your side projects. Um, what becomes expensive is if you're trying to move into a uh, professional, more professional and serious context, you need the dollars for ad spend for getting mm -hmm. that level of quality um, that people expect from more commercial releases. Gotcha. So the folks who are watching this morning who are interested in becoming a part of the JGDS, because mm -hmm. if you're talking about <clears throat> creating that bigger collective that can move as one unit, and start to influence and change things, and it would be good for more people to be a part of that um, organization or society. Um, how do folks do that? Well, you can check us out at jgds.org. Um, from there, you can get an invite to our Discord community um, and just pop in, say hi, and we are welcome, we're warm. Uh, and we just want as many people who are interested, even if vaguely interested, to just you know pop in see what we're about. And all you need is an interest, right? You don't need a, a, a reel or a portfolio or to show no. what you've done before. No. Okay, okay, awesome. All right, thank you very much, Glenn, for shedding some light on this for us. We appreciate it. Founder of Sprite Wrench Studios, Glenn Henry. We're gonna take a break on Smile. We have more after this. <laughs>